You don't need a great camera to get a picture of the moon. If you don't have a DSLR, you can use your phone. In this video, we are going over how to get a picture of the moon using your phone and a telescope. Now you will need a telescope. Using the built-in zoom will not work. Even the most recent phones don't have enough zoom to get any good details. And I would also avoid attachments like these because they don't provide enough focal length. So here's what you'll need. The first thing you will need is a telescope above around 600 millimeters in focal length. Even if all you have is a cheap reflector like this one, it will work. And you can start with the widest eyepiece that you have and work your way to smaller eyepieces if you wanna focus on a specific feature of the moon. So what I'll do in this video is show you how to take a picture of the moon with your phone with this telescope and I'll also show you with my Dobsonian just so you can see a comparison of the two. Now another thing I also highly recommend is a cell phone holder just like this one. And the reason being is that sometimes holding it by hand doesn't always work as well as you think. Sometimes you might be slightly angled just a little bit wrong, causing a little bit of distortion in the picture, and you might not be holding it as steady as you think. And using this mount, the phone stays steady on the telescope and you can line the phone perfectly up with the eyepiece. Now I like to line it up a little bit before dark, but you can wait until the moon's visible and line it up in any way you like. But to use it, Here's what you do. So the first thing you wanna do is clamp the eyepiece into the cell phone mount. And if it has a tension knob, just like this one, go ahead and tighten it down so it stays tight on the eyepiece. Go ahead and insert your phone into the mount and then open up the camera app. If the one you have has knobs, play around with the knobs until you can see through the eyepiece with no edges of the eyepiece showing through the camera. After that, as long as no knobs are adjusted, you can remove the phone in case you need to use it for something else while waiting for it to get dark. And you can also take the eyepiece out of the holder so you can use the eyepiece to center the moon before attaching the phone. Now the cell phone holder that I have is the Celestron one and it's linked down in the description, but you don't have to get that one exactly. However, I do recommend that if you get a cell phone mount, get one similar to it where it has the three axis adjustable knobs. Now I have this other style cell phone holder and let me tell you, these sliders that it comes with, they're really hard to fumble with and you can't really perfectly align the phone up as easily as you can with the Celestron one or similar style ones. The last thing we can do is go ahead and get the phone ready. It's still light out where I am and the moon isn't exactly visible from my position. It will be in about two hours, but I like to have it just set up and ready to roll. That way I don't have to mess with it too much. Now, if you are on an Apple device, you're you're gonna need to download a third party app. Apple, for some reason, doesn't allow full control over the camera, but there are third party apps that allow that. My personal recommendation is Nightcap Pro. That one costs about $3 and I've used it on a prior iPhone that I used to have and it allows full camera control. But if you're on Android, you'll need to go into Pro Mode in the default camera app. And before you do that, I highly recommend going into the settings of your phone and make sure that Save, Raw, and JPEGs in Pro Mode is turned on. Let's go ahead and dive into the app and set it up for both. On both phones, the first thing we're gonna want to do is set the ISO to as low as it can go. Whether you're on Apple or Android, it doesn't matter. Set it to the lowest. Don't worry, the moon is bright. This is fine. This is a starting point. We may or may not change it based on the moon phase. The next thing we're going to need to do is change the shutter speed. And for the shutter speed, let's set it to around 1 1 80th of a second. This is just a starting point based on the moon phase. So we may have to either make it faster or slower depending on what phase it's in and how bright things are looking. White balance balance on some phones can't be changed, but that's okay. If you can change it, set it to daylight or 5500 Kelvin. We're not going to worry too much about the focus. We'll just leave it at wide for now. And we'll deal with that when we're actually looking at the moon. And lastly, we need to turn on the self timer. This is to minimize the vibrations when we tap the shutter button and tell it to go. It'll just settle a little bit before actually taking the picture. If you want to try using video to stack frames, you can. Just make sure that you use the same settings that you would in regular single shot mode. For Android, this is in pro video mode. And if you do decide to use video, check out my moon processing from video guide down in the description. Now we just have to to wait for it to get dark. And one thing to keep in mind with a telescope, even like this Newtonian or a Dobsonian, if there's any kind of temperature difference between where you store the telescope and the temperature outside, go ahead and take it outside early and give it time to match the ambient temperature. It's very important just to help the overall quality of the picture. All right, now we are outside. Uh, the telescopes have been cooling for a little while. There's still got a little bit to go, but that's okay. We can get set up while waiting. And the moon is pretty much right up there, so I have the telescope kind of pointed at it. 
And what we're gonna do is go ahead and get the telescope on the moon and then we'll attach them out. So when you have your telescope, go ahead and take your time and just go ahead and find it. There you are. I had it close so I could see it. Let's go ahead and fine tune the focus. All right, and now that the moon is in the eyepiece, I'm gonna go ahead and just scoot it just a little bit ahead of where the moon will go. That way the moon can go through the frame while getting the phone focused and set up. All right, so I have the phone on the mount and we can see that the moon is kind of in the frame, but not quite. So we're gonna make just a few adjustments. Now this telescope that I'm using is an older one and yeah, the tripod got damaged at an event I took it to, some kid climbed on it. But now that the moon is in frame, I see that the left edge is a little bit blown out. So I'm gonna turn down the shutter just a little bit more. Okay, and that looks good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a few more seconds. And actually I'm gonna focus just a little bit. All right, and when you're using an Android phone, you see that green edge there that's on the uh, edge of the moon. That means that edge of the moon is in focus. So if you wanna play around with it and try to get more features in focus, you can. But that looks good to me. So while doing this, if any edge of it looks blown out or a little bit too dim, you can mess with the shutter speed and depending on the phase of the moon, you can even turn up the ISO if it's like right at the end of new moon. But that looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tell it to go. And because of the timer, you still saw that vibration and now that the timer stopped, there's our picture. So what I recommend when doing this is always take at least five to 10 pictures that way you can just choose from the best of the bunch because there's always some vibration when you hit the shutter button. Okay, so we saw the pictures here on uh, this telescope. So I'm gonna switch it over to the Dobsonian and we'll take a look. That one has a little bit more focal length so we should be able to get a little bit more zoomed in. All right, so I have the Dob in place and I did get it at least pointed and lined up with my 30 millimeter eyepiece, which is a two inch, which by the way, this cell phone adapter does fit two inch eyepieces. Um, it does go slightly bigger than two inch too. I put it on a couple Teleview ones and those ones are pretty big. All right, and because I know that this is already lined up with the eyepiece, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it right into the telescope and we're gonna look for the moon right away. And we'll go ahead and go through the focusing as well. Tighten everything down. moon so we'll go ahead and get focused and we're gonna have to adjust just a little bit there we go look at that and, all right so now look at that I'm gonna go ahead and lock the focus here I'm gonna use the phone's focus, get those little green lines again. And you can see right now that the seeing isn't really that good, but that's okay. We'll just readjust the daub. And now because there's more focal length, the moon is actually moving through the frame a little bit quicker. So what I'll do is I'll adjust it just a little bit more, put it right about there. So I kind of want to move it up. There we go. And I'll go ahead and tell it to go. And I actually want to reduce the shutter speed just a little bit. This daub lets a lot of light in. Do five shots each. And then like I said, if you want to do video with this, we'll use the same settings, but just do a quick video and we'll actually let it go completely across the frame. Okay, and if you want to do video, like I said, uh, for Android users, 
you can go back out and then go to pro video. And then I was at 50 ISO. And I'm gonna put this back to where it was, 350. Set the white balance, 5,500. And might have to, yep, have to refocus. There's those green edges. Now, in order to get the most out of this, go ahead and finish focus one more time. There we go. Now, in order to get the most out of this, what we'll do is scoot this over to the edge of the screen just when it's barely on the edge and we'll hit record and just let it go until it hits the other edge. And what that'll do is it'll give us a ton of frames. I think this is at 30 frames per second and we can take it into PIP pull out those good frames and then put it into auto stacker and Registax and Photoshop and just merge it all into one picture. Like I said, if you want to know how to do that down in the description, I have my moon processing from a video guide linked down there. And I will add that the poor seeing right now will actually kind of act like a pseudo dither. And when you stack it in auto stacker, it's going to kind of help out a little bit with pulling more data out. But from here, whether you just took a picture or a video, you can either just post it wherever you want, or you can take it into Photoshop and play around with it a little bit more if you're skilled in Photoshop and want to try to sharpen things up or pull a little bit of color out of it, whatever you want to do. That's it. That's all you have to do to take a picture of the moon with your phone. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.